safety concerns. Joining me now is one of those former officials pressuring Haspel, uh, Mark Polymeropoulos, a recently retired CIA senior intelligence service officer who oversaw operations in Europe and Russia. Mark, you know, in the movies, which is the only place most of us interact with, you know, CIA agents, the, the, the head of the agency would be sticking up for their people. Uh, it is odd that the one thing we know about the whistleblower, we believe to know, is that this person is or was a, a, a CIA employee. Why nothing from the boss? So, so, Ali, first of all, it's good to be here. And I think you have to kind of look at this in the context of, you know, we're watching a graduate school, graduate level class on leadership that kind of spans across, you know, various, you know, United States government national security agencies. And so we've already seen kind of the failure of Secretary of State Pompeo and Secretary of Defense Espers in, in not protecting their personnel under really withering attacks, withering partisan attacks. And so, so that's really the, the course of action that you wouldn't choose when it comes to um, uh, the intelligence community now now it's kind of their turn um, uh, you know in the barrel and so you have a, a, a whistleblower um, and in essence um, the intelligence community leadership which is of course uh, uh, the acting uh, DNI chief McGuire and then the secretary uh, excuse me uh, uh, director of the CIA Haspel you know it, it's it's really going to be incumbent on them in some fashion to kind of take a different track a different course I think under you know Pompeo and Esper's failed we don't want to see this from the intelligence community I wouldn't expect that they do so. And, and let me kind of give you kind of a scenario where I think that it would work in terms of showing support, because ultimately under the statute, you know, it's I think it's going to be incumbent uh, on, uh, on McGuire to come out and say very clearly um, that the whistleblower, the, the, the identity should not be revealed. Um, and in addition, you know, he, he should very publicly, and I know he did speak back in September in, in, in a hearing, but it's November 7th. It's a long time uh, ago. And, and, it's, but, and it's trickling out. The fact is people are right. doing this now. Um, and there's real danger in this politicized climate. We know that people do crazy things. So it's not just the intimidation, uh, which is sort of a message to everybody else who might be a whistleblower. Don't do this or That's we'll right. come after you. But this person could face real danger. And that's why I think, a, you know, a, a public statement, when I say public statement, it's not necessarily for the media. I think McGuire has to talk to the, all the intelligence community personnel and very clearly say, you know, two things. One is that we're going to protect the identity. Um, you know, it's also clear that the, you know, he, the whistleblower has, you know, outstanding legal representation, and that's something that the rank and file will be looking to. And then the final point is that there will be kind of physical, physical security protection. Um, but there's another piece of this, too, and I think you have to be, you know, it's more nuanced with, uh, with uh, Director Haspel. Now, she can't necessarily come out and, uh, and defend and the whistleblower, because that almost acknowledges uh, uh, his or her affiliation. And, you know, I don't know uh, uh, the affiliation. I don't know the name. And so that's almost irrelevant. But what I think she can do is that she really has, uh, and, and we've seen this, and especially when I was there, she has a, a fairly productive relationship with the White House. I think, you know, she is seen as nonpartisan. She has given the president very candid advice. So I think it's very possible, and I think it's likely that she will tell, you know, in private, um, the president to have, you know, him and his, uh, you know, his allies back off. You know, at, at the end of the day, um, this is kind of a seminal moment in the leadership of both McGuire and Haspel. So there's a, I, you can, without defending the whistleblower's actions or arguing that you think they did the right thing, you can defend the process by which uh, a whistleblower comes through. And, and I would imagine that um, Haspel and, and, and all intelligence leaders should be able to subscribe to the idea that there should be a process by which people who see wrongdoing should be able to report it. That's right. And that's, you know, that's critical to, to uphold that. Now, look, at, at the end of the day, if, if, you know, this entire process falls apart and it looks like, you know, it, it certainly might be, what would the, the, the recourse be for someone who did have some kind of problem? Well, you know, the, the, the traditional whistleblow channels are very important. Um, you know, what would you want them to do? Uh, you know, perhaps the media would like if they came to the media, but there's counterintelligence concerns uh, mm -hmm. as well. So the whistleblow statute, it's really right. important to, uh, uh, to protect. Yeah, you make and an think, important look, point, Mark. You can't just have people going to the media with everything, intelligence right. officials may say that wouldn't be a safe way of doing this for people involved or for national intelligence purposes. So if they don't have a process, it's not like normal people who can go to the media if, if something is wrong in their company, if it's a, if it's a major corporation. That's right. I, absolutely. And, and, you know, this is a tried and true process and we've seen it work uh, in the past. So it's critical for this to, uh, uh, to continue as well. And look, I, I can't stress enough. All eyes are on both McGuire and Haspel right now. Look, I think they're going to do the right thing. Um, so while I talked about, uh, you know, uh, Secretary Pompeo and Secretary Esper, I think both McGuire and Haspel will uh, go forward. You know, uh, Director Haspel is someone who, you know, is, is a career CIA officer. Um, she does have the support of the rank and file. 
Um, and, and, you know, most importantly, I think she's, she's, you know, as we call it, dancing through the raindrops. She's somehow forged a productive relationship with the White House while also keeping the agency healthy and intact. Um, so I, I expect her to do the right thing here. And it, the, the interesting point is that, again, as we take a look across the government, that would be very much unlike um, some of her uh, uh, compatriots at state yeah. and, and defense. Mark, thanks for joining me. Mark Polymeropoulos is a former senior intelligence uh, officer with the CIA, served more than 26 years uh, with the federal government.